Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We're looking at question number four now on the 2012 Manitoba Math Competition. Two parts to question number four. We got an A part and a B part. The digits, we're reading part A now. The digits one, two, three, four can be arranged to form a four digit number in 24 different ways. What is the sum of these 24 four digit numbers? Okay, so they're absolutely right about the 24 different ways. Because if we think about a four digit number, and we're, we're picking the numbers uh, from one, two, three, four. We have four choices for the first spot, uh, the first digit. And then uh, once we've crossed that off, we've got three choices left. And then two choices left for the next one. And finally, we are left with just one choice. Four times three times two times one. Uh, another way to write that is four factorial. And it is 24. Okay. So, well, we're supposed to sort of add up all these numbers. Is that That's my understanding. What's the sum of the, these uh, 24 four-digit numbers? Well, uh, one thing, and I do see people do this every once in a while, 24 is, is not that many. Okay? So you could write them all out and add them all up. I don't recommend this. You've only got two hours. You want to choose a method that is going you know, to sort of save you time. And if, if there were five or six digits... We'd be looking at 120, 720. You are not wanting to waste time that way. Don't waste time with 24 either. If it was two or three, yeah, maybe four is sort of on the borderline. I can do this the, the slow way, or I, maybe I can try and find a faster way. And we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and find a faster way. Um, I'm going to start by looking at a smaller case. This is something uh, you can do um, if you... Wanna, if you're a little stuck, if you think the numbers are too big to work with, look at a smaller case. So uh, suppose if we only had two digits. So we suppose we only had two digits. What numbers could we have? We could have 1, 2, or 2, 1, 12, and 21. If I add these guys up, we get 33. Okay. Um, now suppose we had three digits. What could we have? We could have 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. You can already see this is going to be a bit of a pain to add up. But notice we've got two ones, two twos, and two threes. So if I were to add these up, that's the same as doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 twice. So that's 2 times 6. We're going to get 12. Carry the 1. Then what have we got here? Well, we've got two ones, two twos two threes, and then we've got the carried one. It's going to be another 12. 12 plus uh, one is a 13. And you'll notice we get the same thing over and over again. And this, uh, the uh, uh, one, three, three, two, it's actually a multiple of 12. Um, it is 12 times 111. And this guy here, well, um, it's hard to see, but he is three times 11 is the one we want. Uh, 3 is 1 plus 2, and uh, 12 is 2, so 1 times 3 is 1 times 3, which is 1 plus 2. Uh, 12 is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3. And herein lies a pattern. Okay. So if we think about these numbers, we'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4, 3, uh, 1, 3, 2, 4, and so on. We're going to get uh, one quarter of, the, of the, the units digits here. We'll go all the way down to three, four, two, or four, three, two, one. One quarter of these digits in any column are ones. One quarter are twos, threes, and fours. Okay. Well, what's one quarter of the total? There's going to be 24 numbers in total. So one quarter of these 24 digits in a column is six. So there's going to be six ones, six twos, six threes, and six fours. So the sum of the digits in each column is 6 
times the sum of, how, well, the 1, 2, and 3, and the 4. Because they each appear six times. Just like over here, the 1s, the 2s, and the 3s, they each appear twice. And up here, the 1s and the 2s, they each appear once. Okay. Uh, in general, if we wanted to uh, make a little happy cloud bubble, uh, in general, you'll have n minus 1 factorial 1s, n minus 1 factorial 2s, and so forth, and the sum of a column is n minus 1 factorial times 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to n. Of course, this breaks down once you go past 9 because you don't really have a tens digit, although you could, I guess, work in different bases or something, but let's not worry about that. We've got a specific problem to work with. So the sums of each di uh, the digits in each column is 6 times, uh, well, what's this? This is uh, 6 times 10, 60. Okay. But then there's all this uh, fun carrying nonsense. And I suppose we could, you know, put the 0 down here, carry the 6, and get to... But uh, we don't actually have to do that. Because there's another thing going on here. 11. 1, 1, 1. Uh, so we're going to get 60 units. And then 60 in the tens, 60 in the hundreds, 60 in the thousands. So the sum is going to be 60 times, well, 1 for the thousands, digits being added up, the hundreds, the tens, and the units. Okay. So this is just going to be 66660. Now, we could probably use some more complete sentences, but ultimately, there it is. We, we might have noticed a, a smaller pattern. We generalized it a little bit. Uh, and I, I'd say that's a little faster and less error-prone, especially I, they took away our calculator. Okay, no calculator is allowed, so we can't really be, be doing anything like uh, using a calculator, but I wouldn't want to anyway, because adding up 24 different numbers, you're prone to make a mistake. Even if you've got them all written out and you're looking at them, there might be a duplicate, so that can be challenging. Uh, so you wouldn't want to do it by calculator. You also wouldn't want to do it by hand, just trying to add all that up in your head. It's going to be a little time-consuming. So stop, recognize a pattern, because there definitely is a pattern to way, the way these numbers are made, so there should be a pattern to their, their sum, and indeed there is. And knowing this, uh, if, if B part asks us, some if, if you do it with seven digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have a surefire way to do it. And I don't think that's what B said, because uh, uh, on the MMC, I know to, it, part A and part B are usually only a little related. Uh, but if they asked us, we know the answer, okay? Or we know how to get the answer. So let's go back and look at B part. Uh, we're probably going to need uh, another piece of paper. What have we got here? Write x to the 4 plus x as the product of two quadratic polynomials with integer coefficients. Integer coefficients, okay. Well, um, there's some, if, if I didn't have to write everything out, I could probably jump to some pretty quick conclusions. It's going to, both the, the x squareds are going to have coefficient 1. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to write this out anyway. So uh, let's uh, let's say x to the four plus one is a x squared plus b x plus. C. We're just writing the most general thing that we can. D x squared plus e x plus f, and that's going to be well. It's going to be a d x to the four plus some lower terms lower degree terms. My point is, for these to be equal, coefficients need to match. So AD needs to be equal to 1. Okay, AD being integers, means either A equals D equals 1, or 
A equals D equals minus 1. Uh, now, you, you do have the choice, but if you do the minus ones, just multiply every, uh, both of these things by minus 1. Uh, we can do something fancy by saying, without loss of generality. This is a really fancy math term that we probably shouldn't be using. Uh, we can say a equals d equals 1. I would probably justify this by saying otherwise. Multiply both polynomials. by minus 1, and that would change the leading coefficients to 1s. Okay. So now what can we do? Well, x to the 4 plus 1 has got to be equal to, and now we know it's x squared bx plus c, uh, x squared plus ex plus f. Now, you would likely be tempted to do something like, well, we can solve for the coefficient, c times f has got to be equal to 1, and again, c equals f is equal to 1, or c equals f is equal to minus 1. We can't just pick the equals 1 option, because uh, we uh, sort of forced the, the a and the d to be 1s. But that's certainly something that you can do. What I'm actually going to do is continue going towards my higher power terms. We'll get x to the 4 plus, and then ex cubed plus bx cubed. And that'll be it for uh, powers of 3. So again, I'm, I don't care about whatever's left, so I'm going to say some lower terms. So x, x to the 4, b plus e, x to the cubed, plus I don't care. But once again, for, for this polynomial to be equal to this polynomial, the coefficients have to match. But there is no x cubed on this side, so b plus e has got to be equal to 0. So what else? What could we say? Well, we could say e is minus b. Okay. Now we're slowly getting through things. x squared plus bx plus c. x squared minus bx plus f. Okay. So, um, well... It's been serving us fine thus far, so we can say x to the 4 plus uh, there'll be no, we'll get 0x cubed. And then how can we get x squared stuff? Well, we can get x squared plus f, or x squared times f. So we can get cx squared, we can get fx squared, and then we can also get b times negative b. So that would be minus b squared x squared. Okay. But that's it for things that are going to give us x squareds. So I would say plus lower terms that I don't care about. And once again, coefficients need to match. We can probably stop repeating that. 0 has got to be uh, c plus f minus b squared. Okay. Now this doesn't really give us anything but uh, c plus f equal to b squared. b squared is always greater than or equal to 0. So now, if we compare constants, we see 1 has got to be equal to c times f. You could expand it out and show it, but uh, the point is uh, c equals f equals 1 or c equals f equals minus 1, since they have to be integers. So c plus f is 2, or c plus f is negative 2, but of course the second one can't work. So c plus f is equal to 1, so c equals f is equal to 1. And now we've got just about everything except that b. So x to the 4 plus 1 is x squared plus bx plus 1. And then x squared minus bx plus 1. Why not just expand the whole thing out? We'll get x to the 4. We'll get no x to the 3s. Uh, we'll get 2x squared minus b squared x squared. We'll get uh, no x's because the bx times 1 will cancel out with the minus bx times 1. 
and we'll get 1. So 2x squared minus b uh, x squared has got to be equal to 0. So we see pretty quickly that 2 minus b squared has got to be equal to 0, but that means b squared has got to be equal to 2. Two quadratic polynomials with inter integer coefficients. Oh, well, pfft. silly me. We need to have a 4 here. I, I had this copy down as a lesson learned, uh, and, and this is a lesson for you guys. Read the question carefully. I thought it was plus 1. Uh, so, no, plus 4. So we're just going to go back and edit a little bit of what we were doing there. Because I was wondering, because b would have to be square root of 2. And I was about to say, I've done something horribly wrong, and yet I've done it in a completely logical manner. Uh, so what, what can we do? Well, we can go back and change. Uh, this guy here should be a 4. This guy here should be a 4. It didn't affect a whole lot until we got down to here. CF being equal to... Uh, well, now, if they're integers, we could have 2, 2. We could have 2, minus 2. But we could also have 4 and 1. So it, it, did, it did affect a little bit, but just at the very end of there. Just at the end. Hmm. So we have actually some, some pairs. We can have uh, CF could be 4 and 1. It could be 2 and 2. It could be 1 and 4. It could be um, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4. Okay? There are different possibilities because uh, it might matter whether or not the bigger of the two goes with the minus b or some, something to that effect. Okay. Uh, now, all of these other ones down here at the bottom can still be ruled out. C plus f has to be sort of positive. So now we've got some cases to work with. We've got some cases to work with. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, we still have to, to finish off here. So I might say something like case uh, CF equals to 1 comma 4. Uh, we'll put the 4 over here. And then uh, what have we got here? We got uh, 1 plus 4. We'll get 5 here. And then we'll get 4 here. But, um, oh, no, we can, uh, we can do a bit more. We don't have to break it off into cases. Because if uh, we just saw, we just dealt with squares, sort of. I mean, I know, it's, no, I know it was a while ago, but x to the 4 plus 4 is x squared plus bx plus c. x squared minus bx plus f. So we're going to get x to the 4, we're going to get no squared terms, we're going to get uh, c plus f minus b squared, x squared, and then we're going to get uh, b, c minus f, x, and then the cf. So cf does have to be equal to 4, but b, c minus f has got to be equal to 0. So either... So b is equal to 0 or c is equal to f. Okay. Um, so, but if b is equal to 0, We get uh, x squared plus c, x squared plus f, it would be x to the 4, c plus f, x squared plus uh, cf, c plus f would have to be equal to 0. 
and that can't be done. Okay, because we already said C plus F is it's going to be 5, it's gonna, or it's going to be 4. It's going to be one of those two. So we've got ourselves a bit of a problem. And we, we you know, you might want to explain that in, in a bit more in terms of uh, sentences. But I think what we're doing is just fine. So C has got to be equal to F. And so C is equal to F is equal to 2. And now we're basically back to where I was before I had to reread the question. X squared minus BX plus 2. X squared plus BX plus 2. X to the 4. And then ultimately what you'll get is 4 plus, or 2 plus 2 is 4 minus B squared x squared plus 4. So 4 minus b squared has got to be equal to 0. b is either 2 or minus 2. It doesn't matter which. Because either one is going to, you're just going to get, it's about the order of those two polynomials and that does not matter. x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, so integer coefficients, everything's fine. What I would do at this stage, just because we've come so far, is just for our purposes, double check. Expand it out. Does it actually work? Uh, so we're just going to quickly do that. Uh, x squared, so we'll get uh, x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus 2x squared. And then we'll get plus 2x cubed. Um minus 4x squared plus 4x and then plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 4. Let's cancel some things out. Uh, that's uh, 2x cubed and that 2x cubed cancel. 4x and the 4x cancel. And 2x squared, 2x squared and minus 4x squared. Everything works out. So, so we're doing good. We checked it. It works out. You don't get marks for checking it, but just after such a lengthy computation, you want to make sure, did you actually get it, or did you make a tiny little typo somewhere? I made a tiny little typo at the start of the question because I thought it was x to the 4 plus 1, and uh, that would have gotten us no integers, and that made me stop and look. And then I had copied down the question wrong. So you got to be careful with that sort of thing, but other than that, I'd say question 4 were, was, uh, took me a little longer uh, than I was expecting, but... Uh, straightforward, a bit disjointed. Part A really seemed to have nothing to do with Part B, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, yeah, that's all I want to say. I'll see you guys for question number five. Uh, hopefully you guys join me there, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.